TLI's on the money. Looks good, fly. Roger, Fido. Okay, guys. We're going to the moon. On April 11, 1970, aiming to become the third mission to land humans on the moon, Apollo 13 begins its journey. Three, two, one, zero. We have commit and we have lift off at 2.13. However, just three days into the voyage, disaster struck when a routine procedure triggered an explosion in one of the spacecraft's oxygen tanks while it was over 200,000 miles from Earth. Hey, you know, we've had a problem here. This explosion ruptured the oxygen tanks, forcing the cancellation of the lunar landing. The crew faced immense challenges as they struggled to survive the journey back to Earth, subsisting on only six ounces of water per person per day, enduring severe power rationing and contending with plummeting temperatures inside the cabin, which dropped below 4 degrees Celsius. One of the uh, potable water lines was frozen the morning of entry that, that, on the last day. That's how cold it was in there. Despite its original purpose as a lunar landing mission, Apollo 13 became a story of resilience and ingenuity as both the crew and ground control team rallied to navigate the crippled spacecraft safely back home. Their harrowing journey captured the attention of the entire world as the threat to the lives of the three astronauts kept people around the globe on edge. When the spacecraft was being built, a damaged liquid oxygen tank was installed in the spacecraft. The mission, although ultimately not achieving its intended goal, stands as a testament to the bravery and resourcefulness of all involved, highlighting the risks and challenges inherent in space exploration. Join us as we unravel the harrowing tale of NASA's third moon landing mission. Houston says that they will get back to Earth alive only if the lunar module systems work perfectly all the way. The flight of the Apollo 13 to the moon is in serious jeopardy. Before we start, it's important to understand the different parts of the spacecraft. The craft comprises three integral modules, the command module, the service module, and the lunar module. Each plays a vital role in the mission's success. The command module is the crew's living quarters and contains the cockpit, where the astronauts control the spacecraft's systems and instruments. It also houses the engine for the return trip, as well as the parachutes and heat shield needed for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Meanwhile, a service module, also known as an equipment module or instrument compartment, is a component of a crewed space capsule containing a variety of support systems used for spacecraft operations. Lastly, the lunar module facilitates the descent and exploration of the lunar surface. After performing the successful moon landing of Apollo 11 and Apollo 12, NASA pulled ahead of the Soviet Union as the undisputed leader in the space race. The dramatic achievements in space which occurred in recent weeks should have made clear to us all. On April 11, 1970, Apollo 13 was launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Three. The crew was led by Jim Lovell, an experienced NASA astronaut. Joining him were John Jack Swigert, who served as the command module pilot, and Fred Hayes, who was designated as the lunar module pilot. But initially, command module pilot Ken Mattingly was planned to remain in lunar orbit in the command module Odyssey. Four days prior to launch, it was determined that Mattingly had been exposed to measles and had no immunity. In order to avoid the possibility of Mattingly becoming sick during the flight, he was replaced by his backup, Jack Swigert. Neither Swigert nor Hayes had previous spaceflight experience at the time of the mission. 
The three astronauts were at the command module, nicknamed Odyssey, situated at the top of a Saturn V rocket. Their mission was to reach the Fra Mauro Highlands of the Moon and explore the Imbrium Basin, conducting geological experiments along the way. On that day, NASA experienced a sobering reminder of declining interest in space exploration as only around 200,000 spectators turned out for the launch. A stark contrast to the 7 million who had gathered to witness the liftoff of Apollo 11 nearly a year prior. This is Mission Control Houston. We appear to have a good first stage at this point. As the mission approached its 56th hour and ventured around 205,000 miles away from Earth, the crew had just wrapped up a live television broadcast, although few television stations had shown interest. Actually, it was the end of the workday. We were fixing to go to bed after we did a few things to clean up and the next morning go into lunar orbit and get ready to land. Scheduled for the following day was Apollo 13's planned entry into the moon's orbit, with Lovell and Hayes poised to become the fifth and sixth men to walk on the lunar surface. Noticing a slight drop in pressure, Houston flight controllers wanted to check the oxygen levels in the service module, so they asked Swigert to perform a routine cryo stir on the tanks. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tank. Here's where everything took a drastic turn for the worse. The crew heard a loud bang from outside and called down to Houston to report, with Swigert saying, OK, Houston, we've had a problem here. Concerns escalated as both the crew and ground personnel observed troubling readings, indicating problems with the oxygen tanks and fuel cells. Hey, uh, we've had a problem here. Oxygen tank 2 had been completely depleted, while tank 1 was steadily decreasing. Initially, some at Mission Control suspected instrumentation faults, but Lovell's observation of gas visibly leaking from the service module confirmed the seriousness of the situation. Later investigation revealed that an overload in an oxygen tank during routine testing caused the heater switch to short out, resulting in the circuit breaker becoming fused shut, effectively turning the tank into a bomb. The tank had been dropped on the factory floor a little piece of plumbing and prevented the normal procedure for removing oxygen after a routine test prior to the flight. This explosion occurred when Swigert initiated the stirring process, blowing a 13-foot panel off the service module. As power and oxygen levels rapidly declined, the objective of Apollo 13 shifted from a lunar landing to a critical mission, ensuring the safe return of the crew to Earth. And from then on, it was not a third landing on the moon, but a survival of how to get home. An hour following the explosion, Mission Control directed the crew to relocate to the lunar module. Consequently, the crew needed to power down the command module and transfer to the Aquarius, which could serve as a lifeboat due to its independent life support system. Originally intended solely for transporting astronauts between the orbiting command module and the lunar surface, the lunar module was originally designed for two astronauts to undertake a lunar visit lasting approximately 20 hours, whereas the journey back to Earth would necessitate all three men cramped inside the capsule for four or five days. As the spacecraft drifted 157 miles beyond the far side of the moon, consequently, the crew of Apollo 13 established a Guinness World Record for the farthest distance from Earth ever reached by humans. Another maneuver was planned to speed up the journey, two hours after Perisynthion, the closest approach to the moon. There was debate over whether the service module should be jettisoned to further increase speed, but concerns were raised about exposing the command module's heat shield. NASA ultimately opted for the safer alternative of a four-minute burn expected to trim 12 hours off the flight time and ensure a targeted landing in the Pacific Ocean. Nearly 24 hours after the initial explosion, the crew executed another successful burn. An issue arose with the square lithium hydroxide canisters from the command module being incompatible with the round openings in the lunar module's environmental system, posing a problem for removing carbon dioxide. Houston had to improvise a filtration method using only resources available on board Apollo 13. 
After 35 hours of testing, the Mission Control improvised an adapter using materials available on board, and the crew successfully replicated their model. They devised a solution using spacesuit hoses, plastic bags, and duct tape. Navigation was quite challenging too. We constructed two of these things and put them online, and I think within an hour, the uh partial pressure of CO2 is down to two tenths. Next on the agenda was to discard the damaged service module while utilizing the lunar module thrusters to navigate a safe distance away from it. Thrust looks good. This marked the crew's initial observation of the explosion's magnitude as they conveyed the extent of the damage to ground control. Lovell, Hayes and Swigert were huddled in the chilly lunar module for three long days. Amid these harsh conditions, Hayes fell ill with the flu. On April 17th, a last-minute navigational adjustment was executed, utilizing Earth as a guide for alignment. Following this, the command module was successfully repressurized and powered up, and one hour prior to re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, the lunar module was detached from the command module. We had a lunar module that was a wonderful vehicle to travel home with, but didn't have a heat shield, unfortunately, and surely we'd have to abandon her. Around 1 p.m. on April 17, 1970, the spacecraft re-entered Earth's atmosphere. As Odyssey initiated its descent, tension gripped both the crew and the watching world. The intense heat generated during re-entry caused ionized air around the craft, resulting in a complete communications blackout. For over four agonizing minutes, NASA anxiously awaited any sign of contact, fearing potential failures of the shields or parachutes. Eventually, after a prolonged blackout period, the crew established communication. Odyssey Houston, we show you on the mains. It really looks great. They had successfully returned home, landing in the Pacific Ocean, where they were rescued by the USS Iwo Jima. Despite the challenges faced, the mission was called a successful failure, demonstrating NASA's ability to excel even in the most critical circumstances. And that's it for our deep dive into the incredible journey of Apollo 13. So it was a question of getting this entire world geared and oriented to one single job. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us in this incredible journey. If you enjoyed this video and want more thrilling tales of exploration and discovery, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest uploads. Feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And also let us know what you would like us to cover next. Until next time, goodbye.